this is James Christian, and we are here today with video number four in our series on essential skills for tenor drumming. Today we are going to enter the wonderful world of crossovers. Now crossovers have two main purposes. One is musical and the other is visual. We will start with the musical. Now, crossover simply means one hand crosses over the other in this situation. Um, the, there are three main positions you need to know, but overall there are 18 positions, and I'll cover all those in just a second. But the way to think about it is breaking it down into the three essential positions. Um, when you have the widest stretch over drums three and four, your hands are going to cross over about here, just slightly past the halfway point of your forearm and they'll cross and make an X shape like that. When you get a little bit narrower, say between drums one and four, you're going to cross over closer to the wrist right here. And then when you get the narrowest, two drums next to each other, say drums one and two, you're probably going to have to cross over with your hands over each other. If you have a little wider room, say on drums two and four, you can cross over just above your fulcrum. It just depends on the difficulty of the musical passage where you can. You may be able to do it right above there. It just depends on what you're playing and where you're going and all that. But basically it's just uh, knowing where you cross over and the tighter the position gets, the more it moves in. Now there are 16 primary positions and two secondary positions, and I'll cover all those. So there's eight for each hand. So right over left, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then with left over right, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, all of those positions you need to become comfortable with. Some you see more often than others, but they all do happen. The secondary positions I mentioned come with the Spock drum, and that is when your right hand is on drum two and your left hand is on the Spock drum, or your right hand's on the Spock drum, and your left hand is on drum one. So most of the time you can avoid this position as a crossover. So say you have something like this. In both situations, you don't need to cross over. But sometimes, if you're having to move quickly between drums two and four, you have to have a crossover position there to execute it effectively. So something like this. situations you do have a crossover and you'll find you tend to cross over almost there. I try to get closer to where the wrist turn is so that I've got a little more room to move but um, but just depending on what it is you may have a little more of that especially if you're going between drum one two and four maybe something like this so you'll notice right when I'm hitting it I'm trying to hit kind of more in the center of the drum there um, so it may be more uh, with the hand over the tip of the stick in that situation. Now with all crossovers, you're going to have whichever hand is on top, it's going to be raised slightly, and whichever hand is on bottom, it's going to be lowered slightly. This is true for all positions, even the wide ones. You'll notice this hand is slightly over, this one I'm having to drop just a little bit. It's not real drastic uh, when the wider positions, but the narrower you get, the more you have to drop that one to where my wrist is almost touching the Spock drum, and my upper hand, I try to raise up just a little bit, a little bit with the elbow, a little bit with the wrist, not too drastic with either one, to where you still maintain a generally good uh, up and down arm position, but you do have to do that a little bit just so you're not hitting your hands against each other. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you an exercise that covers all 18 positions, and it's really good for building your spatial memory. Um, I've never shown this to anyone before, so uh, you guys will be the first to get it. Now on to the exercises. If you'll remember in the first video, we did all the one-handed movement patterns, and I said just get the other hand out of the way, focus on proper playing zones and arm position. Now we're going to play parts that require that other hand to be there. So for now, we're going to start with our position as the right hand over drum one and the left hand over drum two. I want you just to leave your left hand still for a moment 
and your right hand is going to do uh, slow eighth notes. You're going to go drum one, drum two, drum four, drum two, and just keep doing that over and over again. Practice the crossover uh, position. Once you feel comfortable with that, you're going to add the left hand in between. So if these are eighth notes, you're going to now be playing sixteenth notes, and you're just going to keep the left hand on drum two. So here you go. Alright, now finally, I want to practice reaching a little farther with your right hand. So you're going to take out drum two with the right hand, you're going to keep left hand in between, so let's do it slowly as eighth notes at kind of a moderate tempo. Now do it a bit faster. You'll notice as you get wider reaches, and the tempo increases, uh, you'll notice it just looks cool. You get a lot of visual uh, movement from that. Notice also I'm not accenting every crossover note. I'm trying to keep it as smooth as I can, both uh, with the rhythm and with the volume. All right, let's do the same thing off the left hand. So keep your right hand still over drum one now, and your left hand's just going to play uh, slow eighth notes over drum two, one, three, one, two, and keep repeating. Now add in the right hand in between. Now finally, your left hand is going to Quit playing on drum one, and you're just going to go between two and three with a wider stretch. Now faster. to take some of the previous patterns we played and add crossovers to them. So let's start with triplets. I'm going to do it between drums one, two, and four. The first measure, you're just going to reach out and put the downbeat on the adjacent drum. So here's the first measure. On the second measure, you're going to add crossovers, so you're going to switch which drum you're hitting. So here's the whole exercise repeated a few times. Now you can do the same thing on the left hand with drums one, two, and three. Um, that's up to you, essentially practicing the same skills. Uh, now I want to do the same thing with paradiddles. Um, we're gonna, I'll switch over to the other side just for contrast. Um, so do the same thing where you're going to reach out and do the downbeats moving out, and then the second measure you're going to cross over on all the downbeats. So here you go, here's the paradiddle measure. accents on the paradiddles. Uh, we will in just a second, but for now I want to try something where we shift where the crossover happens. So we're going to do just straight paradiddles, and I want to cross over the second note of every paradiddle. So here you go. Finally, I want to cross over the last two, the diddle part of the paradiddle. 
notes three and four. Now we're going to add an accent on the downbeats, just like traditional paradiddles, except I'm going to shift the crossover where it occurs. I'm not going to write this one out on the uh, exercises for this, but just it's an idea for you to play around with. Practice doing different patterns where you put accents on some crossovers and you don't put accents on some crossovers, and uh, you'll see it will build your coordination on this. So I'm going to do paradiddles where the crossover on the first note, then the second note, then the diddle part, and uh, I'm going to keep the accent on the downbeat every time. So here you go. player you can take these a lot faster so you might try this more uh, at a brisker pace try it so if you can get those pretty solid at, at being able to have control over accents or non accents you'll find your coordination uh, really improves on these Alright, I'm going to do two more exercises. Uh, this next exercise is going to be straight up paradiddles, then followed by double paradiddles, and then triple paradiddles. And then it's going to go back down to doubles and then singles. So the first uh, two paradiddles, you're going to uh, do like we've done before, where you move it out, and then you're going to do two paradiddles where you cross over, and then you're going to do the same thing with doubles and then triple paradiddles, and then go back down to double and singles. We're going to add accents on the first note of each, and we'll play it at kind of a moderate tempo. Suppose you end the piece with some big impacts on the bottom two drums uh, and you had this rhythm. So 
So one, two, four, triple, one, if that was the rhythm in four, four. Now what you can do is take that same rhythm, but then you can add a little bit more visual interest to it by playing it with some crossovers mixed in. So if it's a moment that you want to be really big and bold and you want to have it as just full out as you can, then adding that visual emphasis will really complete the picture uh, musically and visually. Now, another situation is where just adding something that's really flashy if you want to accentuate that it's something impressive you're playing. Suppose in, you had a piece in concert music with three concert toms. Usually they'll just write the drums they want and they won't give you the sticking. So this particular pattern, suppose I was going to do uh, some fast 30 second notes with each uh, grouping of four, move two drums, four and one. I would probably in concert band play that with paradiddles with the starting on the left hand. That would probably be the smoothest way to play it. So it would be like this. If you had something like that in concert band, usually it's, you don't get that kind of stuff as frequently. But if that was a passage in an orchestral piece or wind band piece, then uh, that would probably be the least cumbersome way to play it. But if you're doing something that you want more visual presence for, such as marching band or a tenor solo, you could play that same passage starting on the right hand and do crossovers on every one. So it would be like this. So there's virtually no difference in the sound you're getting, but visually it just adds a lot more impressiveness. If you're going to play the piece, or the, if you're going to play that passage twice, you might start the first time with the left hand and then add something interesting visually by playing it on the right hand, so it would have the same musical repetition, but visually you would add something unique each time. So just be aware of how you can use crossovers to enhance the visual package of the music. Um, if it's something that you want to be more understated, you may want to avoid those crossovers as much as possible, but if you want it to be flashy and big and uh, bold, then you may want to add more crossovers. So just, uh, just another tool in your toolbox to uh, create a whole presentation. All right, finally, uh, we are going to conclude with an exercise that will use all 18 crossover positions. This is an exercise I came up with a little while back. Uh, I came up with it after I wrote my tenor book, so it's not in there. And uh, I've never shared this with anyone before, so you guys are going to be the first to get it. But uh, I found it's a really good exercise for just building your awareness and forcing you to play in every crossover position. So what it is, is it's just straight 16 notes, you accent each downbeat, I'm going to start on the Spock drum and just move down the drums for those downbeats, and then all the inner beats are going to stay on individual drums, so as you get through them all, you will have played every position. Now when you get to the two positions I said are secondary on the uh, drum 2 over the Spock drum, or drum 1 over the Spock drum, um, I would go ahead and practice them that way. It's not essential, you can do it without the crossover, but might as well go ahead and get the practice in uh, while you're doing the exercise for that reason. All right, here we go. Here's the exercise.
uh, you'll notice in a couple of those uh, patterns on the last one, some of them have no crossovers just because when you're on the outer drums, you have more room to reach out. So uh, it's a mix of crossovers and non-crossovers, and most music has that mixture. So uh, that's just a good exercise to uh, combine all the types of uh, setups you may see. So all right, you know the spiel. If you like this, please share it. Help other people out who could use this information. And uh, like the video. If you have any comments or things you think uh, help better or um, any questions or anything, uh, feel free to uh, leave comments below, and I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Next time we're going to enter the wonderful world of sweeps and scrapes or split doubles or whatever term you like to use. All right, thanks. Have a good day. Bye.